I have to get in mind that my people in the Mitana Municipality, my constituents, are really starving because they kept on coming to my gate, especially mothers and their children, and obviously men. And these people are genuinely starving and they did not have anything to eat at home. So being a charitable leader, and I'm actually known about that in Michiana municipality, and my family, even before I was born, my family used to do that. So I thought that it was prudent to really care about my people, but also to put in mind that I have to obey the regulations of public health. I really did everything having that in mind because I knew that if I do not really I would be putting my people at risk since I, I love Pichana people I love them so much there's no way how I would see any kind of victim of the COVID-19 problem we have in the world friends I want to let you know that I packed those foodstuffs on that day of 19th with some of my household workers. Yeah, they took me pictures with them within my compound, as I've told you. I never went out of my compound that very day of 19th of April 2020. After packing those foodstuffs, one of my household workers called some of our Boda Boda riders who participated in the distribution of those foodstuffs but I really want them to make sure that they do not gather people I told them to do it house per house and I know those people being part of my coordinators I'm sure they will not disobey me and when they did that they were able to send me a few pictures on my phone by 2 p.m. I was having those pictures, I really looked at them, and they really obeyed what I told them. I want to let you know, comrades, that I posted those pictures on my social, all my social media pages, I posted those pictures. Reason being, I wanted to demonstrate that as a leader, I can really help my people without giving from the poor. Remember, I'd written a letter to Parliament to make sure that they do not put 20 million Ugandan shillings on my account, of which they put a stamp on my letter later on. And I'm sure they never did, at least because I talked to the Speaker the pre previously on, uh, on Friday, yeah, before the top 19th. I want to let you know that uh, that day I felt so happy that I have given out to some of my people, especially my immediate neighbors in Kusaburongo. I gave them something. I feel so happy whenever I give out because really I think my family is made for that because for us we believe in sharing the little we have. Comrades, at around 7 p.m., while I was in my bedroom, I had several patrol cars coming to our place. I was informed that these people jumped over the fence of my house. There were so many that no one was able to count them because they came with several cars. And these people included police, policemen, they included the military, the UPDF, and people who were not in uniform. As I was in my bedroom, I had bangs of those, I had voices, I had that kind 
of uh, shouting. I was able to put on my clothes since that I was in my bedroom and I was having a shower. As I was like get, putting on my clothes, actually getting done, I had a very huge bang on my bedroom door. And that was the RPC of Mitiana in my bedroom. I really saw a very big crack on my bedroom door. I was very, very surprised to see RPC doing such a thing. Just even before I would ask him anything, he held me by my trousers violently. I really asked him, really? Mr. Kagarula Bob, why are you handling me in this manner? What have I done? He silenced me by putting handcuffs on, on my hands. I said, like, but I'm not violent in any way. Please, do not hold my trousers like that. Well, I'm not a chicken thief. He was like, don't tell me anything. For your own information, I'm a PhD holder. For you just studied from a very cheap university and you know nothing. I felt so bad seeing so many soldiers in my house turning everything of mine in the house upside down. I asked after seeing the deep still also in the house, because I know him by the names of Alex Muine Mkono. Asked him now, do you people have a such warrant to do such a thing in my house while I'm in handcuffs? They're like, we do not need that. It's like, did you inform Parliament about what you're doing right now? We do not need all of that. They started pushing me with their guns out of my house. Getting out, I saw very many soldiers in my compound. I have a very huge compound at home. And these people were really so harsh, speaking with arrogance. I really smiled and laughed like this is unbelievable. How, how can you behave like this? They're like, so, Zaka, you're trying to resist terrorists. I was like, come on. You, you, have hand, you, you have handcuffed me. And I'm walking. Whatever you're sending me, how can you say that I'm resisting arrest? There were camera personnel I saw. And I believe this people planned to come with all of those people. They knew what they, they were going to do. So I laughed at them. I was like, you people, if you think that distributing foodstuffs is the problem. For me, I cannot see my people starving when there is nothing government is doing in my district, Mitiana. I cannot see my people starving, yet I, I need these people and these people really need me and they love me so much. I got into the car, all that was captured and I know it was in the public domain, I'm very sure. put me in their double cabin car with several other police trucks I saw. I want to remind you that in my in my house I had a tune of 15 million Canadian shillings which was taken by those people informed to me by my wife that these people after taking to police they came back still and they messed up the whole house the bed the bedroom where the money was the phone and also the whole of the sitting room everything was messed up and they were telling even as they were looking for food Disappointingly, they didn't find anything. But I'm wondering why they took that money. Reaching at the police station, of 
Smetiana in the compound well strata with handcuffs on my hands because I was seated in between the Araputs, the RPC Bob. The, 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 the RPC is called Muine Alex. The RPC is called uh, Kagalula Bob, yes. Then the DPC sat in front. And that is the Bob, that is the Muine Alex Mukono. So for me, I sat in between another person who was not in uniform and then the RPC. Before I reached the police station, I remember very well those people telling me, now we have you in our hands and there is nothing now you can do. We are going to really show you something you've never experienced in my life. Really, I never believed that at first. But later on, I really faced whatever they told me. So, at the police station, they just dragged me out of the car up to their offices and that office of the DPC Mitiana. they kicked me slapped me punched me by people who were in, in, in uniform and some of them were not in uniform who were doing that but all the beatings were initiated by the RPC Kagadula Bob and also he punched me on my mouth and the, I started breathing right away and also Mr. Muine Mukono he kicked me and I had to fall down still well I'm handicapped in his office they told me that how can how can a useless person like you who cannot even be a class monitor a later a member of parliament think that you can really fight president Museveni comrades I want to assure you that there was nothing which these officers in within their offices talked about distributing foodstuffs. They never talked about that within that office. As I was asking them why all, all that was done to me, that really was boosting the beatings, the kicks, the punches, the slaps by the different people whom I did not know, but at least I knew those two, the RPC and the DPC. These people bundled me up and put me into their cell of Mitiana police station. Reaching that cell, I realized that the cell was so tiny and dark. It had over 20 people. But reaching that cell, I realized there was a woman and I was very surprised to see a woman with men in the same cell. I picked interest in her. She really narrated her order to me, did these other men in the cell. We were there for over three weeks in that cell and we were only fed on maize seeds for all that time. This boy informed me how most of them were HIV positive, but they were never given medicine, the ARVs. It me so much, but I was like, you guys, keep calm. I think when I'm out of here, since I'm your leader, I'll be able to at least talk about these things. That was within like, I think, 20 to 30 minutes, if I can remember so well. This, these people came back to the door of that cell. They requested me. They were barking at me. Zake, come out. I 
was trying to come these other people in the cell started shouting on top of their voices tulina we tulina we tulina we people power people power i think this annoyed officers and i saw the dpc there the rpc and many other soldiers all officers myself to a steer guest everyone was groaning in the cell trying to shed tears in the cell including myself they were able to pick me up amongst the many dragged me kicked me did all sorts of things and took me to the waiting many patrokas in the compound reaching there I vividly saw I, I vividly I vividly saw the RPC telling the officers please and he said that in Runyankole please make sure make sure he does not see the goat some small bottles I was seeing they put them direct in my eyes for some time till when I would hear him shaking I would hear the person shaking and putting and then put another down I had it being dropped and then put another one in my eyes I thought maybe it is pepper spray because it was really so painful so itching I cried a lot I shouted I was like please forgive me please forgive me they would not hear they would not really listen to me I thought maybe it is pepper spray and thought maybe after some time I would see again but come is up to now I can hardly see though the doctors the opticians they are trying to work upon this that's why I'm having these glasses to go to the light they tied me they put two handcuffs and uh, two handcuffs this side to make it my hands and they tied them all over these parts it was very also painful they tied me with ropes and they joined both ends of the ropes to put me behind the police truck there is that back side of the truck or the police truck of the double cabin where the policemen sit but there is that space in between it is actually triangular in nature they made sure that i was suspended and hanged without actually leaning against both ends of the metals and also not touching down the metallic ground of that truck and that was done with insults abusing me how i'm very dense how i should thank president Museven for making a, a useless person like me a member of parliament that i should be appreciative of him so many other insults we are told to me i had several cars starting i think they were over four if i'm not mistaken they drove me at a very terrible speed we never would come across the the road bumps my body would swing on the sides of the metals it was so hurting and whenever they reached the potholes out I, I would slightly like get up and down while my back since i was facing up while my back was really touching the metallic floor of the truck it was so painful 
countrymen and women have never felt that pain before in my life. I groaned. I asked for help. These people were only inflicting more pain with sticks, with their guns, and their boots stepping on me. I felt so numb within my limbs, my legs, my hands. It was so painful, so much. I cried than ever before I've ever done. Not even the Alua. Up to now, whenever I remember that pain, it really gets back to me. It was very painful. My Lord. They took me for about two hours. Reached at the, the kit which I had. The gates opened so fast. And one of them asked, Who is that? One of the officers asked, It is this dog, Zake. I thought that maybe this is the person I would be asking for help from because I asked him, please help me. He really didn't. And I had a word in Lunyankole saying, what? And a word in Lunyankole, something like, But it meant that you're now just fatty, but you'll soon defecate. Something like, was a nyampa and something like that. I was hearing something of that kind because I can listen to the language, though I cannot speak it. It was very disappointing because I had thought maybe I'd reached a police station where at least I'll be put in maybe in a place with dignity and not inflicting more pain. These people within the compound were still on handcuffs. After untying me, they really forced me that I should walk. Something which I could not do, I fell down. They stopped on my head with their boots. Beating started from their compound. They put, they dragged me down stairs. The echoes I had made me feel that now this is a very huge building. They put me down on the floor. They began killing me so much while on being handcuffed. Sincerely, I cannot count the number of strokes they gave to me. But it was adding more pain to the extent that I was not even now not feeling anything since my hands were already numb and still handcuffed. I could not feel my limbs, the, 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 the legs. That was the time. They really telling me that I'm, a, I'm just a shitted, a shitted, a shitted dog. And they said that in Runyankul is true. Mazi, was something like that. That you, Zake, you're always there with Honorable Buchagula and you lying to yourself that Uganda will ever become a president. But trust me, you should be aware from today that this country has its owners and you people are not part of the owners of this country. It is Musei and they were referring to President Museven. Those people Whenever I would say anything, it really added more pain on me. There is something I felt like a stick, like having things which were so, which were piercing on my chest, and it felt like as if it was barbed wires.
on my chest, my back, which they kicked so much, and my legs, as I will show you everything on my body. The sides of my tummy, they put those things which felt like barbed wires. They were inflicting more pain. They told me that Zake, you should know that Colleagues, I want to tell you that in that room, I never talked about distribution of food at all. I was never beaten from distributing food because it was not talked about anywhere within even that room. It was never done. It was a lot of pain. These people really put a lot of threats to me in my whole life. I've never experienced tribal statements like which I felt in that room. And most of the words, 90%, it was in Yankole, and a few words were said, like 10% in Uganda, and they were mocking me. Even reminded me one time, a few weeks before we lost Return of Kenya and Dan Chayune. That is okay, we had you crying out to the cat to the katikilo to tell the kabaka to say a word about the killings happening on Ugandas that so that they can stop at least within Uganda and other areas. So what is your kabaka here to help you? What is your katikilo to help you? People this country doesn't belong to you, and you should know that. It is high time you quit politics. And I on other things. One man came and stepped so hard on my head. And he told me in Uganda to repeat after him. As he was beginning to tell me those words which I should repeat after him. Hesitating that called more kicks on my lower back, he said, which still hurts up to now. What pressure were you that? I was only fighting for my life. I had to say everything without telling me. Zake, Nangabugamba Zake, Opfanulu Adelo, Tikola Kudam Kulava. Ngowakanya, President, His Excellency, the President of Uganda, Yoweli Kaguta Museven, the Honorable, they told me never to also talk about and oppose the First Lady, Janet Kataha Museven, and also their most honorable son, Kanelugawa the next president and those are the words they were telling me to repeat after Zake Okubano Rarero Todanga Mukubango Wakanya President Wigwanga Lino Ms. Yoweri Kabuta Museveni Janet Kataha Museveni Wamu no way to when you can look over Muhozi President Adako, never become a number and you get it. Never numbers are can it to damn to cool it down, go gambang away in Banti book in Tuna Rebocha Bulani, President Adako. Pogging up, see what will I'm going to say, Kubanga Chinochitan, the Kabutan, the sea, to gain a cooler gaco. 
Tiche tusobu la kukola kubanga mwe apaganda temuli sobu la wadokufuga keberu yoni ndala yona 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 yona. I want to tell you this has been my fourth time when I'm being tortured. It is my fourth time as a member of parliament being tortured. The first time I'd just come to parliament during the Fiji Quarter Co. I was tortured, if you remember very well, where my head was hit. The second time, I remember all those times, actually I don't need to repeat all of them, even the one where they tiagas my house in Michiana, still by the same DPC, Alex Mwini, participated a lot in my beating. Still, from there, they called Honorable Chagulani still, also a dog. And one of them was mimicking him while speaking in some kind of mocking way. Mulu was a Musulok Fuga, Mulu was a Munachi Musulu Kukola, Mulu was a Munachi Musulu Kukola, two Genda Kukola Kukubanga, Tay Moon, two Yena Yena Yena, as well as Kubanga, Yekala Kasakuru. No one will be demo, will be demonstrating for you because we are running the show. People are under lockdown. We are the only ones running the show. No one will demonstrate for you. You'll be here, and no one will come for your help. I felt so bad. All of that happening, friends. These people got out of that building and I remember one person ran to me and I heard the voice saying Zake tokaba tokaba nyomu nange bino vya tuita mugulijo Zake do not cry this is what we experience every day here because they had dropped me now in another place which felt like a cell Zake to kaba, bila bila tuita mukuli Joe, na parala ni bata ni koko banga baje jendi, ni baka mbaza zake. This place is cold, same way, and the torture is done from the best mid. They informed me, and they cried to me that Zake for you a leader. I think you will not be kept here for so long like us. For us, we've stayed here. Some of them they are telling me they were there for months, so many months, and others is for years. Well, at that same way, torture center. Oh. They really requested me that I should really help them when I'm released. But I really expose whatever is happening in that place that at least they be released or at least they face the court and that serve in prison even when they committed certain crimes. That took around something like 20 minutes or 30. These people came back. came back, they handcuffed me, they, I mean they removed the handcuffs from my hands and now they put them outside, they, they put them behind my back and that is the so-called Kandoya. They dragged me out, they put me back to the patrol, but this time I was face, I was facing now down. I was facing down, not like the other time when I was coming from Etiana. Well, I was facing up. This time I was facing down since that put my they handcuffed me from behind. They still suspended me in the air like how they did it from Etiana. All that happening, 
they drove for some few minutes and I, they reached some other place. They still untied me, got me off the truck, they dragged me, still with beatings and everything. Beating was just happening all the time. All the kind of beating you can think of to summarize everything because now I'm getting tired. They put me under the floor, which was, I thought, cemented, but they poured a certain chemical on me, which was, which was very cold on my hands all over the body. It made me feel so much pain, so much pain. It was very cold, and I don't know if it was made for what purpose, but as I would try to try to, 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 to turn around, I would feel that I was under a table on a cemented ground. I shouted from there, I groaned in pain. They told me do not shout. This is not your father's premises. Instead of concentrating to your father's business, who has become rich under the, this regime, you wouldn't be the person to actually oppose Mr. Museven. They taught me so many insults, friends. I can't remember. I, I, I really can remember everything, but I'm getting so tired to tell you each and everything they said, but so many insults and tribal statements. And I want to put it clear that in my whole life, I want to put it on record. I have, I have been one of the people who have been actually talking against tribalism and any kind of any kind of sectarianism. And I remember also the Honorable Chagulani as our reader institutionary within our ranks, he has always been against that in in the morning within that other second place they made me join they put me in a cell where I joined other captives and they're the ones who lifted me and that was the second day I was inside that place. They told me that that place is the one called the SIU torture chambers. Bachita Echiyumba Bo Mundomo. The Arab was so friendly to me and the other captives within. I found out there were so many journalists within that place. And I want to categorically talk about one person of the voice of Africa called Katende. Yeah, he was so friendly to me because they looked after me, saying that I was unable to sit, I was unable to stand, and all that they would be lifting me. They would be bringing me stuff where I can urinate from. They told me that those people have one meal a day of fresh and beans. And uh, in the morning, they would be given porridge. Since I was so sorry with blood all over me, all over my mouth. This, this person they called Arabi within that place would kick for me a cup of porridge, which I would take in the evening when it is cold, and that's what I would feed on the whole day. But they told me, the captives within, that there is what they call interrogation. And interrogation included insults, beating and you'd be put in a separate room you slashed you given a lot of strokes they told me all that i felt so bad because i told them what about those captives also told me that many of them were also taken to that semi basement where they were also taken from i remember 
when Osi in that place, whom they called Osi the captives, is by the names uh, Walugembe, Walugembe, but they call him Musa. They call him Musa. I remember she she used to hand to hand me over to a man he called to SJ. And on the third day, that man when he told me that Zake, you write here, but I want we want us to make a deal that you'll be resting for six hours and you'll be beaten for 30 minutes. And he asked me, do you agree? To SJ Hamudan speaking. At least I know the voice, even when I don't know how it looks like. But I know the voice. He has kind of I need to both kavu. Ninga na yevi kambi bisinga. Are you getting ninga ni nyankole? Ninga na solo kubi te kera kuba solo kuria. Eni mezimu katimbolo. Kuba ndi interested ni nyoko bera ngamani ni nyoko zibulira. Ela. Awe njini njini, uruna kuru loku satu, tibana njaka lukuwa jukiza kuni, tibana njukiza nga mtu, tibana mtu ya nanyangu panzikiriza nga kunda ba, kabe wa familia yange, kabe mchala wange, kabe tata wange, kabe mtu ya naina enova, akuli member of parliament, pati on the third day, banga mbati, banga mbati, nginda kuwa, Bangi matingina kuba Nisinka no mtu Nimba kuza mtu choyo Nibanga matiko na lepo mwiru Ba Ini metisabo Bangi stulabu nyumba minga baga bambi Temu 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 nyumya Do not please hurt me Nibangi stula Nga bangi kwa tina mubanga Azif Nga ninga nga vila kusitwecha Bangi kwa tanga Kwa manji Nibangi kwa ta Na ye tuwe si jenga gamba haa ah, gosolo kutambula, gosolo kutambula, weko za tuwe si joyo nga wangamba. Gosolo kutambula, weko za mumuleke, mumuleke. Niba mbibo, abasibabo, basibaba nange, bahuliranga, bahuliranga kwa nye chisa. They used to feel pity of me and they never listened to him. But, naba gamba, he actually told them that to put me in a van. It was still, but uh, 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 it was still uh, a patrol car, double cabin. So, Mr. Tracy they used to force me to sit. Yet I never really was ever was never able to sit because of the numbness on my legs, even the hands. Actually, up to now, some of his fingers they are still numb. It was very painful. He was saying he was taking me to see Honabomiru, but on the way, he told me that, Zake, if you think this is just a joking matter, there is someone who wants to talk to you. And he told me that was President Museveni. On the other side, I had a backing voice. Why don't you quit politics and concentrate on your father's business? I did not respond. Uh, because I was feeling so much pain because I was being forced to sit within that car. And I was feeling so much pain, I did not concentrate to hear whether the voice really belonged to Museven or not. And I maybe I thought these are some of their techniques of torture. Or maybe it may be true. I don't know. There was from the torture chambers up to the place where he took me, it was about five minutes. And uh, reaching there, he got out, dragged me out, still forcing me to, to walk something which I was unable. The people who helped him at least to lift me by the hands in the air to take me 
they made me lie on the table just like how you saw in the photo of Mitiana within their offices. They told me that that is the SIU offices. So the SIU offices within Honabumil came a glimpse at me. I had him say, oh, This is impossible. It cannot be. Is this a member of parliament? No, 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 no. Officers, please, this person needs medication. Honorable realized that my lips were very. They were like wounded and I, they appeared so dry. And he told me, I think your sugar levels must be so low. You need something. He went out and came back with drinks. Trust me, the drink he gave me felt like splash something. I think it was the most ever tasteful thing I've ever had on rent at that moment. I felt somehow, somehow, a little relieved. I told him the whole story about what happened to me from the time I came there. She was listening in silence, thinking that maybe I was alone. After telling him all that story, he was told to go away. Then maybe I thought this to have come back. When Bombiro was going away, I told him, please, Mugomi, do not leave me here. Please make sure you do something. At least, please make sure whatever I've told you, you tell to Onobo Chabulani and other leaders. When Bombiro was like, okay, Jake, let me do my best, but it has not been easy for me to reach here because even other colleagues are outside. I've not been allowed to enter inside here. That person. Press J, I'm done. Backed at me and told me, Zake, you're going to regret the reason as to why you've told whatever we've done to you to Honorable Mwiru. I felt so scared. I thought these people were not listening to me since the place was very quiet as I was telling everything to Honorable Mwiru. I thought they were not there. They told me you're going to face it rough. Because we made an agreement that I'm going to beat you for 30 minutes as you rest for six hours. Mr. Presidge forced me to make a statement, something I refused, which added me more punches around my body, around my head, and everywhere. He told me you must make a statement, you must make it, you must make it. He's like, please, I need a lawyer to make a statement. Like, you will. He was like, if you're not making a statement, I'm going to write it myself. He's going to write it himself. That's what he said. I've had when he's turning pages, scratching around with something I felt like as if he's writing. After some 30 minutes, he told me, yeah, I'm now done, you're going to sign. I was like, please, please, if you've done that, you've done that by yourself, not me. She kicked and slapped me again. After some time, she left those things. He didn't make me sign, he didn't make me do anything. She dragged me out. Again, dragging me by the hands, which were so paralyzed, put me again in the waiting same double cabin patrol car. She took me back where that day they killed me more than that we were doing before. They killed me a lot, a lot. How I wish I was able to see the were killing me, but I was unable, but at least I'm sure. Mr. Chris Jehamdan was there because I would hear his voice and I know because he was always talking about that name. He was always telling me I'm Chris Je. I feel you you're listening to it to this. He told me 